Hello Salesforce Ohana, Walters954 from SalesforceMentor.com. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a little bit of motivation to become a Salesforce developer, along with some tips from other Salesforce developers in the Salesforce ecosystem. So this will be how to get started, certifications that you should get, and other things you should learn to become a developer. I'm a highly certified Salesforce developer with over five years experience on the platform. We'll be hearing from other developers that have tons of experience on the platform as well. I know there are plenty of entry level and even experienced Salesforce professionals in the ecosystem that want to become developers. There are many different reasons why you should become a developer. Um, maybe the salaries are enticing to you, or maybe it's just you've seen some of the cool stuff that developers have built. Pretty much everything on the internet has actually been created by developers in some way, shape, or form. For those with a lot of Salesforce experience, this could be the next logical step in your Salesforce career. Let's hand it over to Amit from SFDC Panther on how to get started as a Salesforce developer. Hello everyone, this is SFDC Panther and I'm here to share a few tips with you. So if you are a student and looking for a career path, you are thinking what technology is going to give you the best career for your life. If you are a professional who is working in some technology, worried about your job security, uh, you are uh, not satisfied with your job, you are also not satisfied with your salary or salary hike that you are getting, I will suggest to go with a technology called Salesforce. For the students, there is a learning site which is provided by Salesforce itself that is trailhead.com visit there sign up with your existing email id or if you don't have any email id feel free to create an email id and then sign up with that email id start learning from there and you can also learn some real-time examples you will also given some real-time problems or some mini projects which we call as super badges and you can also put those super badges into your resume for preparing the resume as well you will have you can get that resume from the Salesforce Trailhead platform and you can show your resume to the employer where you are going for an interview. If you are in Crash Technology platform, again you have the same platform which is trailhead.com. For that you have a new program which is running by Salesforce itself that is Journey to Salesforce. You just need to go ahead, type in the Google Journey to Salesforce click on the first link or second link that appear in, in front of your browser and then enroll into that program and you will be guided by a path you just need to follow that path and then at the end once you will complete that path Salesforce is going to help you to appear into the multiple interviews with some of the employer that has already attached with the Salesforce and if you are a class technology person who is outside of India then you can connect with a new program which is Trailblazer Connect that because Journey to Salesforce is not available in uh, outside of India so that is the equivalent program that you can connect with and you can start learning with Salesforce and apart from that as you are a class technology platform you are already working I will suggest to go with three basic certifications one is Salesforce Certified Administrator Second one is Salesforce Platform Developer 1 and the third one is Salesforce Platform My Builder With these three certifications you will be easily get your job and this job is going to give you everything that you are looking into your career like job satisfaction, good amount of money, salary hike and most importantly you are going to get the time to spend with your family so with this i will say all the best for your career all this for you bye bye for those of you just starting out in the salesforce ecosystem trailhead is an amazing place to dip your feet in the salesforce ecosystem whether it's development devops aura lightning web components communities you name it it is there's a module on trailhead that you can learn almost anything about Salesforce from. How often do you find completely free career changing training platforms that anyone can just go and pick up and start learning? So if you're not on Trailhead, definitely create an account and get started there. 
Trailhead is a great way to get started, but development, as many of you know, is a very deep scientific practice. People go to school for four years plus to understand just the basics, myself included. There are a ton of things to learn. How do you know what to focus on so that you can be employable and successful on the Salesforce platform? Brooks Johnson is going to break down some of the key areas of programming to help make you a better developer. Hey, everybody. What's going on? Uh, my name is Brooks Johnson. I'm a Salesforce developer. And Warren, thanks for asking me to shoot a quick video. So um, I wanted to talk about a few things that I'm a big believer in, things that you need to know to get into this industry, whether honestly it's Salesforce development or any other kind, in my opinion, any kind of programming. Um, so I'm going to focus on, I'm going to talk about technical stuff um, and not really maybe some of the other soft skills, which are just as important, um, but things that I think you just have to know as a programmer or maybe you don't realize when you're starting off, right? Because I feel like this was me, right? There's this big focus like, hey, I'll get PD-1 and uh, everything will fall into place. And I got PD-1 and, you know, like, so a couple years later, right? Like I had no idea, like the amount of stuff that I would need to know that in no way um, is covered on PD-1 or in my opinion, even the PD-2 certifications are great. You need to have them. Uh, they're table stakes. They show you're invested in the industry, but there's a lot of stuff out there that is not covered on Salesforce certifications. Um, so don't, first I'm saying, so don't limit your knowledge. Don't limit your learning to what is on a Salesforce certification. Way more out there and there's way more into being a good programmer. Uh, so things I'll talk about. So if you're trying to get started, right, you you wrote your first Hello World yesterday, right? You, you, you checked out David Liu's Apex Academy or trailheads, you know, um, apex for admins, right? You wrote some basic trigger um, and it probably took you forever. And that's good. It took me forever too, right? Um, so what I say is don't get intimidated by syntax, okay? And what I mean by syntax is syntax is the the grammar of a programming language. Every, whether it's Apex or Java, or JavaScript, Python, every programming language has its, because all we're doing is writing instructions for a machine but every programming language has its way of structuring that, those instructions. How do we write them? What are there certain words that mean certain things? I always joke, it's like, where does the semicolon go? When you're a new programmer, this is hard um, and it's intimidating, right? You see people have their editor up and all the different colors and symbols and I've been there, right? Is this a curly brace or a square brace and zero based indexing and I don't know, is it a comma, semicolon, got it. And it happens to everybody. I'm a firm believer that a rite of passage for a new developer is to spend about four hours <laughs> debugging a program uh, because you forgot a semicolon somewhere, <laughs> which is also I'll get into a good reason to learn to use a good editor because uh, I still forget semicolons. You always will. Uh, but a good, uh, good IDE will let you know about that right away and save you from your own dumb mistakes. Uh, but so syntax Honestly, in my opinion, in six months or so, like that, it's muscle memory. It just, it's part of repetition. It's part of practice. And that's a, that's a big part of being a programmer. And I think being a developer, right? So it has something in common with, I'm going to say like being a, a musician or a craftsman. It takes really daily practice to get good at this. And not just what you do at your job. I, I'm a firm believer you got to set aside other time to keep practicing, to keep learning. So if you love what you do, I mean, it's great, right? Because you're just getting paid to do what's kind of your hobby anyway. Um, but the syntax will come, I promise you. Um, a year from now, you will not be wondering, like, where do I put a semicolon? Or is this public static void or public return type like these things will no longer confuse you they'll just be muscle memory they'll, they'll come out so don't worry about syntax uh, arguably I'm gonna say it's the least interesting part of programming once you understand it it's the, the real skill I mean comes into how do we under how do we write good clean well organized scalable maintainable code um, that's what so that's where development's all about and it takes, in my opinion, it takes a while to understand that. And you got to get the syntax down first, but it'll happen. So don't worry about it. Uh, I'm also going to throw out, learn to write clean code. If you don't have this book, uh, I'm going to lean in, Clean Code by Uncle Bob Martin. You should have it. Um, in fact, did a recent interview on the Apex Hours video channel. I believe every software developer should have this book. It will change your life. Uh, I'm a huge believer in the principles in here. And... 
you know, for, like if you're doing a job interview and there are code samples, or, you know, I, I'd say, right, like if you are, I don't know, I'm using single letter variable names or writing unit tests without assertions, to me, automatic is qualifier. Like I would, I'm not going to hire somebody that would write like this weird cryptic code that nobody can read or follow along or understand. So read this book, absorb it. Truly, it will help you and make a difference. I think also start to understand object-oriented programming. I've started to make some videos about that on my own channel, Brooks Johnson, Salesforce developer on YouTube. Um, Apex is an object-oriented language, but just because you're using an object-oriented language by no means like means you're doing object-oriented programming. Took me a while to understand that myself. Um, and but once you start to understand, I'm going to say the power behind interfaces and abstract classes and what that means. Um, I think it will help take your coding to another to another level to help you uh, help you professionally. Last thing I'm going to throw out again because you see I'm kind of, I'm going to talk about the tools, talk about the tech. Get good with an editor, right? Uh, whether I use, I'm a huge fan of Illuminated Cloud and IntelliJ. Um, or whether it's Visual Studio Code, whatever you choose to use. If you're use, if you're still working, like you're getting started and you're still using the dev console or something, I'm gonna say like, stop it right now. Professional developers do not work on the dev console. Uh, getting good with a good IDE, uh, integrated development environment, will help make your, well, first of all, take a lot of the, the tedium out of coding, because there, uh, there really is some boring and tedious stuff. Uh, like I love my code completion and like, ah, oh, what could I, you know, like when I'm running a so cool query and like, I don't have to go and open up the org and what's the name of that custom field on the opportunity somewhere. My editor just helps me with all of that stuff. Uh, helps me know when I made a boneheaded mistake and forgot where that semicolon goes. Uh, start to understand the hot keys and all that stuff. It will really, I think, take you to the next level in terms of speed, power, and efficiency. So I, I think those are the things. Uh, feel free. I try to talk about a lot of this on my own YouTube channel. So feel free to stop in and uh, check it out if you're interested. But remember, don't worry about syntax. Start to understand object-oriented programming. Understand clean code and pick an editor and get good with it. Hope this helps and uh, hit me up on LinkedIn or YouTube or any place. I was happy to talk about programming and code. One of the key takeaways from what Brooks said is development is a marathon, not a sprint. It takes years to learn and build these skills and that's okay. All you need to do is take the first step and never stop. What I like to do is pick a topic to focus on for a month. If you are focusing on clean code, for example, go ahead and buy the book and read it. Take notes on some interesting concepts and look for existing code that you've written that you can refactor to be cleaner. If you follow this method, every month your coding experience will grow and you'll be one step closer to that amazing developer role. It's okay if you kind of lean off the path or the topic is a little bit too hard because if you stay focused and stay at it, you'll continue to learn and it's just gonna build your skills even more. Now that's a lot to throw at you, but Salesforce Chef is here to give you a little bit more information and keep you going strong when you start to lose your focus. Hello, Salesforce Chef here, how are you? Would you like to change your career? Would you like to become a Salesforce developer? Would you like to have a nice job? that you enjoy, where you're challenged, and where you learn something new, then you should consider becoming a Salesforce developer. To become a Salesforce developer, I recommend three things. First of all, get three certifications, Salesforce Admin, App Builder, Platform Developer One certification. Work on getting these certifications. There are a lot of good resources online, YouTube videos that I have created, other people have created about how to get these certifications. Second thing is network. network. Network with people through LinkedIn, through Trailblazer community events, set up virtual coffee chats, learn about companies that could be hiring. Make yourself a nice network. Third thing is apply for jobs okay apply through linkedin apply through networking get referred learn from your mistakes in the interviews that show up 
All right. Initially, you might apply for Salesforce internship or volunteer opportunities. So that you work for three to six months, get some experience under yourself, and you can use that experience to apply for full-time jobs. So make sure to apply, learn from your mistakes, start out perhaps with internships, and then go for full-time jobs. So these are my three recommendations for getting a your these are my three recommendations for getting your first Salesforce jobs. Once again, first, get three certifications. Second is network. Third is apply for jobs. Initially for Salesforce internships or volunteer opportunities and then for entry level Salesforce admin or developer roles. Alright, good luck. You can do it. Now, I think we're starting to see a trend in some of the expectations around certifications to become a Salesforce developer. Platform developer one is definitely a certification you should go for, but admin and platform app builder are also really great, well-rounded certifications that will help you become an entry-level dev. A lot of times, these certifications are the barrier to entry, which is why I also recommend becoming an admin first before you dive into development. There's going to be links down in the description for passing the exam and for learning things like clean code and some of the more advanced development techniques. Now you've got more than enough information to get started as a Salesforce developer. So what are you waiting for? The sky's the limit. I hope this video helped motivate you to start programming. Go forth and write some code. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Walters954. If this video was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. And remember, I believe in you.